we are here to get his word, not our word, to get the Lord's word. May we uh, bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Grace your heavenly Father, coming to you once again, just thanking you and your men and bless. Thank you, Father, for the faith and the things that you had done for us. Not just me, Father, for everybody. Father, we need you. We need you now more than we have in a long time. There's so much turmoil in this world, the Heavenly Father. And we need you to lead us and guide us through this. If people just understand that things that they need to do, they don't do it. But God, just touch them. Put your arms around them. Show them that what life is all about. It's about you. Bless those who are sick and shut in. Bless those who have lost their loved one with this virus and anything else that came upon them. I just want to thank you, Father, for letting me be here this day. For letting me be able to come to your house of worship. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus Christ, who came and shed his blood for our sin. He came here to do what you wanted him to do. Father, we love you, we need you, and we can't do without you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Devotional reading today comes from the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the 32nd through the 40th verse, 32nd through the 40th verse, and it reads, And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephaniah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gain what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fiery, the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and floggings, while still others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, they were put to death, by sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and, ho in, and holes in the grounds. These were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us and so that only together with us would they be made perfect. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of that word. It's, it's very important as we start looking at the scriptures as it concerns the examples of heroes and, and heroes. It does not identify all of them. It does not give the uh, specific events or activity. It lists some of the names that we know, and then it lists some of the activities and the things that were done and perpetrated upon uh, the people of God through the years. 
this whole notion of sawing into it. Uh, we've heard it in the sermons over the years, but the question is, what, uh, who do you consider to be heroes? And what specific action or thing you believe is what put them in your mind in place to be uh, named a hero in life. We look at a lot of things and we, we, we place a lot of uh, uh, people in position. Some people look at uh, my hero as my mother, my father. Some look at uh, sports athletes. Some look at business leaders and what we believe uh, they have done over the years. Uh, I'd like to be like him or I'd like to be like her. But today, we're going to look at what the Lord considers a hero in life. And, 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 and when, when, when you look at it, they'll have one thing in common. All of them is that they all believed God and believed what God said. It had nothing to do with whether they conquered anybody, whether they build a, a king. Uh, Solomon, the most adorned king God has ever done. But, 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 but Solomon believed God. He wanted just knowledge. To be able to be a good king, a good man, to look after, to take care of people. He didn't want anything else. But God said, yeah, Solomon, because you, all you wanted is this. And I'm going to give you this, 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 and this. So, so our ideas of heroes and herons are quite different from God. But when we look at them all, you're going to find out that they uh, believed God. They had faith in God. And that's what God accredited to them as righteousness. Even as we begin to, to look at this whole thing, I was thinking this morning uh, in the second group of scriptures about Abel. And I was thinking between the time that the world began and, 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 and then, I was trying to see there was nothing wrote where God had a class uh, teaching them what sacrifice was, what he expected. But now, he had one example because Adam and Eve had fallen, he provided the first covering to cover over the sin of Adam and Eve. He shed blood. But nowhere else you'll find anything said to anybody about what God required in the beginning. It was only after he gave them the law is when all of this stuff comes up. But yet, that one son found favor with God because of it. Our background scripture today is coming from the chapter, the 11th chapter of Hebrews and the 13th chapter, the first verse through the 19th verse. Hebrews 11 and 13, one through 19. And that is the background or the setting for this entire lesson, if, if, if we don't find enough proof in uh, the printed portion of our lesson, we could read the entire book and you'll see what all of them had in common. But not only that, you'll see what type of people God considers to be a hero. You know, uh, uh, it has nothing to do with what they do. And likewise today, it has nothing to do with whatever we do other than believe in the Lord. 
And, and trust, I looked at one thing this morning, it was saying, you know, unbelief uh, is a sin. So if you don't believe, you're sinning. The first outline, well, let's look at what the, the lesson aim says, and then we'll get to it. The lesson aim says, as a result of experiencing this lesson, you should be able to do these things. One, identify faith contributions for the heroes in Hebrews 11. Value the people in your lives who act heroically through faith and grow in your potential to become a faith hero. Grow in your potential. The first analysis says faith existence, faith existence. And that is Hebrews 11, one through three, faith existence. One says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The faith is the confidence of what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. <coughs> Even from the beginning, when we look at Genesis 1, you, you say, you, you find out uh, in the beginning was God. And it speaks of the world and said the world was form, formless and void and that water covered the deep, nothing was there. Not a thing. God stepped out on nowhere and call somewhere to be. And, 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 and when, when, when we look at what God expects, what's, it's, uh, God's operating right in the space, the faith realm. It wasn't nothing there, he knew it when he went down. And he's expecting us to operate that same way. You know, the faith that we have, uh, we need to Show God. It, 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 it's like when we look at all of these people in Hebrews 11, you'll find that none of them seen what God had promised. Even the father of faith, Abraham, God promised him the land, promised him inheritance, and, 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 and yet he died in the land that was not his. But the scripture records him as saying, but he believed God, regardless of what he seen, or what he did not see. Can you imagine uh, if we went into an area of the city and the trees and grass was grown and there were no street lights, no nothing, we were just walking in darkness. When you look at what Abraham did, can you imagine that? Highway 80 coming out of Selma to Montgomery. I look at the vast expanse of space on that road. And, 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 and uh, civil rights marches march that road when nothing that appears there today was out there. That, that's, that's what God wants us, that, that blind faith, go regardless. If you expect something from me, believe regardless if you expect to receive. And when you look through the 11th chapter, you're gonna find they all died and did not receive. We are still waiting on this blessed promise, the eternal life, all of us. But yet, 
because of their commitment to God, because of their belief in what God said, because they did not waver in they thought, maybe God will, or maybe God won't, but still Abel did what was pleasing. And it's sad, you know, jealousy and envy rose up in those days. We talk about that, but it, you know, jealousy, envy, and it ain't just got here in the world. It's been here. Cain was so upset that God spoke good of him, he, he didn't know what to do. So we, we, we're looking, you know, uh, uh, the Bible say we uh, do not fight against flesh and blood, but against principles, principles and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. See, evil was here a long time ago. Envy was here. Jealousy was here. None of that, all of that stuff, it didn't just get here. We see examples of it. Our problem is, uh, Jesus says that we are always seeing and never perceiving. Can we see what God is saying to us in his words? This there. Verse 5 says, By faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. Before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. It's, it's something, and we sang that song, uh, 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 Walk With Me, Lord. Uh, Here's an example of a man walking and talking with the Lord in the cool of the day. As God come down and visit his children, that's what he said about Adam. Then he said he went down looking for Adam in the cool of the day. God come down looking for his people and Enoch talking with him, praying, worshiping, setting up altars. He was so committed to God, that God and God knowing everything, all things, didn't want that good man down in this world. He'd been here long enough, God said, it's time to go. Isn't that what God said about uh, <coughs> Lot when he was sitting there at the gate of that sinful Sodom? And it talks about how that good man's soul was troubled because of all the sin that was going on. God knew this world long before he destroyed it. And he'd taken Enoch and said, now, there's no reason since a man with your commitment, a man with your faith, a man with your courage need to go through all this torment. So the Bible said the Lord took him. The Lord took him. Verse 6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he first exists, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. You know, we got ways of... Uh, convincing one another that we are this or we are that. And, uh, but that ain't what God is talking about here, that earnestly. See, 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 it, it, it said God uh, looks at our hearts. He's not looking at the superficial, not the outside. He's not looking at the expression, nor any of the things that we do. Because when you come to church, you know, you got some folk been in church a long time and they got this church thing down pat. They, uh, 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 they, they know when to say amen. They know when to throw up holy hands. They even get out there and dance. There's nothing wrong with dancing because remember when David had the opportunity, the Lord allowed him to go to Obed Eden's house and bring back the Ark of the Covenant. The Bible said David danced so by the time he got to the city, he was plumb naked. His wife, oh, she was upset how he 
disrobing and disgracing himself in front of the commoners. But David, it was important to him because he was excited because the Lord had allowed him to do. So that, that, that's the kind of earnestness that, that God is talking about here. If you're earnestly seeking it, because, you know, uh, if you, I love Deacon Harrington, but, 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 but now, uh, Brother Ziegler, you know, I got a question or two. That ain't what God said. Jesus said, you got love for one another. You know, so, so no, no sense in coming to him with part of it. That's what they did, you remember, uh, when they, they, they went to Jesus with this woman who was caught in adultery, and they quoted half the scripture to Jesus, and then asked Jesus, Jesus, what are we going to do with her? You know, uh, 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 Moses said, but the law said that her and him. They come with a one-sided story and thought Jesus was going to line up with them. That's what God is talking about here. You know, if you believe and if you earnestly seek him. But if you, if you go into him believing that uh, you can throw him a curve, uh, that, that's not going to work. Because remember, it said the Lord sees all and knows all. And he understands that curve even though you got it behind your back and position in the ball where no one can see. The Lord is great. Verse 7 says, By faith Noah was warned, <clears throat> Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark, to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became the heir of the righteousness that is in keeping faith. You know, we teach God told Noah to build ark. Scripture says God warned him. So Noah, now look here. Uh, I understand you've been here for the world for 500 years. I understand that. And I understand it has not rained and no such thing as a cloud. The only water on the earth was the dew that falls down. I understand that. But let me tell you, it's going to rain. I'm going to clear the slate. And then it says, when he was born, he built the ark. He believed what God says. It took him a hundred years. Walking by faith. Operating in faith of what God told him. That's how long it took him. When you look at the account, it was a hundred years it took. The mocking, the ridicule, the insult hurled him. Hurled him. And defame him, insulting his entire family all this time because he was a crazy man out here in the middle of a field. Don't nobody know what that thing is. And there's no such thing as rain been on this earth. But they, <laughs> Noah was faithful. And he continued. And God commended him. By faith, Abraham, when he called, when called to go to a place he would later receive as, and as his inheritance, obeyed, went, even though he did not know where he was going. Now, how many folk would go anywhere if they don't know where they're going? How many of us? Something comes to you in your mind and say, you need to go east irregardless to what you see, you go east. First thing we're going to do is we're going to turn around and, and see can we get some, uh, some reference, uh, see can we get some help deciding whether we should or whether we should not. 
Does it make sense to go east and I see that river there and on the other side of that river, there's a mountain and it's full of woods. And we'll sit down and we'll have our conversations with our close associates and our friends, those who we say we believe and we trust and decide whether that's a good idea or not. But what the, the scriptures are saying here, all through chapter 11, is that those people believed God. When Abraham was first called <laughs> back, when he was in uh, Ur, he didn't have no family meeting to discuss what God had told him, he moved. Then again, when God came to him a second time after his dad had died, when he was in Haran, he didn't go back to reestablish the family roots, he moved. And even before God changed his name and after God changed his name, he continually believed God. Remember the story when God come down the final time and decided to, on his way to uh, Sodom, decided to stop by uh, Lot's house and was talking to him about his inheritance. And the Bible said Lot's wife was in there laughing and God said, Lot, why is she in there laughing? Why is she in there laughing? But Lot, Abraham continued to believe. And God accredited him to righteousness. As a matter of fact, he said, uh, Abraham is the father of faith. Because when God took him out there and said, look up there, if you can count the stars, that's what your descendants will be. And the Bible says, everybody who believes God receives righteousness as Abraham did through the Abrahamic covenant because we believe God. We got one last outline, one last outline. And that is faith endurance. That is 11, 13 through 16. Faith endurance. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. And many times we are often reminded in various sermons by our pastors uh, that we are just travelers. This is not our home. Don't, don't, don't get committed uh, to this place because we're going somewhere. That is, if you are a member of the family of faith of God, because if not, some of you, you know, you're going to move on, but you won't enjoy the benefits that the Bible has recorded for us. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. They even tried that in the wilderness when God first uh, freed the Hebrews. They got up there and Moses went up there at the mountain and stayed a minute too long. And they didn't understand. They wanted to know why he just didn't leave us in Egypt. They went through, they complained, they murmured. The whole time, we'd been better off if we'd have stayed there. The Bible says that if, if you're looking back at where you come from, there's plenty of opportunity for you to go there. One problem, the gift of eternal life ain't back there. It's moving forward in God. 16 says, instead, they were lodging, loaning for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. And that's what Jesus told us. He says, uh, I go and prepare a place for you. And uh, where I'm going, 
there you shall be also. Scripture says that. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I, I wouldn't have told you. you know, no sense in going out getting near real estate trying to build a home. Uh, those homes that God's talking about are going to last forever. When you get to the, the final analysis of it, it says throughout the ages, all eternity, we're going to sing praises unto the God. It does not say nowhere in there that there's going to be any remodeling or upkeep going on. The only thing going on there is going to be praises to our Lord and God throughout all eternity. Okay. All right. Amen. Okay. Amen. We got any thoughts or questions about these examples of heroes? The examples of heroes. Uh, I know in the back of the minds of a lot of people, uh, uh, they, they enjoy that title uh, of hero. They love to be called somebody's hero. And when you look at the body of the works that embody those bodies, uh, you don't see faith. There's nothing said about faith. This was done or that was done. The works of man's hands but but the Lord don't he don't spread his blessings based off of man's handiwork matter of fact he curses it all that golden calf they built down at the mountain Mount Sinai when Moses got down he took the tablet and threw it down there and knocked it down and then God punished all the people but today through grace, and through God's mercy, we have opportunity to receive forgiveness for whatever we may do, right or wrong. When we come up short, we can go to the Lord and seek forgiveness. Not so in these days. God just judged people and he was swift. He was swift. But because of his long suffering today, we have opportunity to receive it. Any thoughts or questions or comments or discussions or verses? Anyone? You agree with God? Is that, is that the final decision that we believe the Lord? Sort of like what they told Moses at that mountain. Moses, you go up there and you talk to the Lord for us. And uh, whatever y'all agree on, we agree. That's what they told him. Just, just don't, you know, Moses, we are afraid of his awesomeness. But whatever you and the Lord work out for us, we agree. And that's what we're saying. But now when we, we, we remember now, look at the scriptures. You find out what happened through the years. Those sacred agreements, where they went and what the people did, and we were continually hearing God had to punish them because all of them decided that whatever they did in their eyesight was right. They gave up on this whole notion of what God said and what God expect, or how we should look at these people that God has titled heroes. Yeah, you know, you know, because we, we, we come up with this thing We'll talk about David, how great he was, man after God's own heart. Then we'll get in our side sessions 
and we'll decide to bring up this whole notion of uh, uh, this extramarital affair. But not only extramarital affair, we'll look at this notion that uh, he uh, was labeled a murderer because he uh, sent this man, Uriah, to the heat of the battle so that he could be killed to cover up his sin, his fornication with that man's wife. And, uh, but still, God said he was a bad after his heart. So when we, we start looking at it and when we have our conversations, we probably need to look at how God is classifying this whole, this whole uh, issue. Because no matter what we think about what he did or did not do, God has remembered him. His heir is the heir to the world and joint heirs to us because we believe. These are, this is what God is considering heroes. So we need to be mindful of that. Any thoughts, any questions, any comments? Look like we are. Good morning, 17th Street. Now I had the opportunity. I was going to tell you, as long as I'm sitting over there, I'm okay. But once I get up, I don't know what happens. It seems to me uh, something is poured in me once I get up off of that seat. And I thought about it. Here it is this time last year. I did not see you. But the Lord had blessed us and allowed us to be able to come back in the house. One more time. And I say to you today, you can't come back in the way that you live. Amen. Why? Because uh, they say heaven is a what kind of place? Noisy place. Yes, sir. That means that we have to praise God. As Brother God High said earlier, uh, when we get to the point where we back food, we got to practice now. Well, this is your practicing ground. This is your ground to get ready. Because when we get in where we hope to be, they said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man. That's what God has in store for you. We not seen heaven, but we know all about it. Why? Because we have studied the word. In studying that word, you have the choice of where you want to go. And it's only your choice, not mama, daddy, anyone else. It's your choice whether or not you want to go. Amen. So, if you see me acting a little strange, I can't help myself. Why? Because last year I was looking at a little old bit of tea to try to get the word. And I'm this type of person. I'm like the children. <laughs> you can't teach me on a little tube. I need to be able to look at your mouth. Amen. I need to be able to hear. I need to be in your presence. I need to be where I can hear and receive. And so the Lord had blessed us to be back in his house. And so there shouldn't be a dry or a dry mouth. say unto the Lord, Why? Lord, we are happy the Lord to be back is in your house. So let it be and your practice and ground. I can't help myself. It just, it's uncontrollable how much the Lord has blessed me. And I'm, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to be quiet about it because I can't. Why? Because the Lord, that young man told me he first loved us. So if you will, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing us once again yes, to be able to come to this house, Lord. Come to this house, Lord, which you have established that where when we come together, Lord, we can come together in this house, which is your house, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be able to come this morning, Heavenly Father. Yes, but Lord, not only that, but thank you for allowing us to lie down last night, Lord, and then we don't even know when we have fallen asleep, Lord. Amen. You are just that good, Heavenly Father, that you bless us and allow us to fall. And you kept us all night long, Lord. You didn't allow anyone to break in, Heavenly Father. 
Even though we lock the door, Lord, you are out, lock Heavenly Father, because you kept mankind out, Heavenly Father. Because mankind, if he make the lock, Lord, he know how to get past, Heavenly Father. But you are our lock this morning, Heavenly Father. You have allowed us, Heavenly Father, to come in and uplift your holy name, Lord. For truly you're worthy this morning, Lord. For Lord, you brought us from the early existence of our life, even when we did not know you, Heavenly Father. Deep in sin, thou commandest our love to waters. And for that this morning, Lord, we are grateful this morning for the blessing that you bestowed on. Thank you for your word this morning, Heavenly Father. For your word is the only thing that will save us, Lord. Help us this morning to hide that word in our heart that we may not sin against thee, Heavenly Father. That we may go out and tell a dying world, Heavenly Father that you are our Savior, you are life, you are everything unto us this morning, Heavenly Father. And I'm just grateful this morning, Lord, for the blessing that you bestowed on us, Lord. Thank you for this church family. Thank you for this house. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your son, Lord, who died that we may have a right to this tree of life, Lord. Realize we've been wrong in our lives, contrary to your word. Not being good children, Heavenly Father, but you've been a merciful God. And for that, we're grateful this morning, Heavenly Father. Bless us now as we go forth in thy name, Heavenly Father. Bless your servant <clears throat> who will proclaim your word unto your people, that we not only be hearers, Lord, but that we may be doers of your word, Heavenly Father. Go out, Heavenly Father. Walk out right before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. But Lord, we realize that this is not our home, Heavenly Father. Yes. And one day we must do like others. Lord, we must ask you to call. You told us that hymn books and Bibles will be closed. We won't have to study war no more. We won't have to worry about the troubles of this whole world. We just ask this morning, Lord, that you'll receive us into your kingdom. We just want to be somewhere around your throne. Do you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou have been faithful over a few things. Come a little higher and I'll make you rule over many. My prayer for Christ's sake. Amen and thank God. Man, thanks so much, Deacon. You know, last week um, when Deacon Harrington and I went around to commune and visit with um, our members who are who are convalescent and, and not able to be here, um, Deacon, I can relate to everything you were saying just now. Sometimes when we allow to see brothers and sisters who would rather trade places with us, it gives us a proper perspective of just how grateful we ought to be. Amen. That there's always someone else, believe it or not, who would rather trade places with us. As we went from house to house and facility to facility, um, I just got renewed um, in the visits, deep as we visited some of our people. And, um, and we talked about, and I just thought about how um, so many of our people that we're used to seeing with us here on Sunday mornings, um, who are not with us here now. And my heart goes out to them, but it goes out to, to you as well, because it gives me an opportunity to remind you uh, that in all things, we ought to tell God thank you. Amen. Um, but for the grace of God, we would be there too. Amen. You know, I tell you, I, I want to preach briefly from a book of scripture that we don't look at very much. Uh, the book of Lamentations, chapter 3. The book of Lamentations, chapter 3. One of those, um, one of those books of the Bible that doesn't get a whole lot of attention. Father alone will know all about it. Father alone will understand why. Cheer up my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Y'all help me one time. Father alone will know all about it. Father alone understand why. 
Cheer up my brother Live in the sunshine We'll understand it All by and by Faithful till death Says our loving master a few more days to labor and wait trials of this world we then swing as nothing as we sweep through the beautiful gaze but until then father alone lamentations three oh all about chapter three. Oh yes sir father alone will understand why cheer up oh, cheer up my and my sisters all live in the sun shine we Understand it all by and by. Father in heaven, we thank you for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for moving by your spirit. Signs and wonders accompany your movement. Now, God, I pray in the wonderful name of Jesus that you will touch, heal, and anoint, that you will lift us up into your presence, that we might get a glimpse of your glory, and that you will reveal to us there the things that you have in store for us. God, I pray that you'll forgive us of everything we've ever done wrong and that we stand before you fully capable of receiving your great grace. God, I pray for the sick and the shut in. I pray for the careless and the unconcerned. I pray for that soul that is nearest hell. I pray that you will meet us at every point of need, that there will be no problem that you will not solve. Oh God, I rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will counsel us to be obedient to your will and in all things righteous, teach us to say yes. God, I pray that you will bless this waiting congregation and infuse us with the sanctification of the Holy Spirit. God, I pray that you will succ just succinctly bless us in ways that we will be give able to give your name the praise. And now, God, there may be some things that uh, I failed to, to ask, uh, but I know you will not fail to grant. Do it all in the wonderful, rich, and marvelous name Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior. We thank God. Amen. My brothers and sisters, um, Lamentations, the book of Lamentations, uh, one of those um, overlooked books of the Bible um, that speaks of the lamenting, that speaks of the weeping, um, that speaks of the deep sense of pathos, the deep sense of worration even. Um, but the book of Lamentation also um, speaks to introspection how once we begin to think things over you know um, sometimes when we are at a vantage point that's high and lifted up we can't see just how far God has brought us as long as all of our needs are being met as long as things are going as well as, be, as can be expected, uh, we sometimes take our eyes off of the one who made it all possible. And so Lamentations, the book of Lamentation, um, gives us an opportunity to journey into introspection. It gives us an opportunity to get in touch and get in tune that if it had not been for the Lord, all the things that we enjoy never would have come about. This is after the great siege of Jerusalem. And now the writer has an opportunity to look back um, over the panoply of life, um, as we all do. Has a chance to look back um, over the journey over which he has come and take a stock of where he now stands and fully confident of where it is to go, he writes these words. Lamentations 3, begin with verse 19. And we'll make our way down to verse 25. Lamentations 3, begin with verse 19. We'll make our way down to verse 25. Here now the reading from this sacred text. Remembering 
mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul hath them still in the membranes, and is humbled in me. This I recall in my mind. Therefore have I hope. Verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good, not past tense, is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. And again, go back up if you will please, our key verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies, some translations said of the Lord's mercies that we are not destroyed. But here in, KJ, in King James, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, we are not literally eaten up. It is of the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassions have no failure. My brothers and sisters, in these precious few moments that are yours and mine to share, I want to lift up in your hearing, it's all because of him. It's all because of him. You know, um, it sometimes get kind of easy for us to attribute our success to our own ingenuity. Not necessarily any one of us here, but it's kind of easy sometimes for us to attribute uh, the path over which we have come to our own strength and intellect. And, and that's a very human reaction to accomplishment, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's, it's a very human reaction to look around and say, use the personal pronoun, I made it this far. I did this. That's human. I accomplished that. You know, I remember when I walked across the stage, I looked back and gave the person behind me a high five and said, I made it all this way. I mean, it's, that's a human reaction to look around at what we possess and what we have accomplished and what we have achieved and attribute the success to our own ingenuity. Um, I got here by myself. You follow me? That kind of mentality. Um, I am responsible for all the things that I now enjoy. Uh, but the writer of Lamentations gives us an opportunity to engage in some introspection, to, to look deep down inside of us and say to ourselves that if there was a balancing scale, if there was a scale on the one hand, we had all the things that we've done well. And then all the things we've not done well, I'm not so certain it's going to balance out. Because the truth be told, we have had uh, more victories and defeats than we have had just victories. Sometimes they kind of balance out, but for the most part, when we look at the scale, we've not done all that we thought we were capable of doing or should do. You know, desire and ability sometimes go in different directions. When I was real young, um, I wanted to be an NBA point guard. Um, I couldn't, I, I, couldn't. I wanted to be an NBA point guard, put it like that. Um, that was my desire, but it wasn't my ability. And sometimes desire and ability go in separate directions. But when we do those things to get us closer to achieving our desire, if we're not careful, we will attribute the success to ourselves. Now that's a very dangerous thing, brothers and sisters. And one of the reasons that's a very dangerous proposition uh, to have in our minds is because it takes our mind off of the one who really is responsible. And God does not bless us so that we can be blessed, but God blesses us to in turn be a blessing. And when we're not focused on the blessed Lord, but instead focus on the blessing, we will not become the blessing that God wants us to be. And so we're so focused uh, on what we have accomplished that we don't understand that the reason God brought us out of the murk and the mire 
It's not so that we can get to where we are and pat ourselves on the back, but to prepare for the next phase of life. From, and so uh, God gets us to where we are because it's not where we will end up being. We're simply in a holdover pattern, a, a way station. And God can never get us to our ultimate destination of sanctification in him as long as we spend too much time at the rest station. And one of the biggest causes of us resting at a rest station is our own personal accomplishments. You know, um, we, 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 we can look back and say, I have more than I've ever had before. And we would take that as vindication that that's all I ever need, so I'm gonna sit here and rest a while. But God is trying to remind us you didn't get to where you are on your own. And it was no good thing that you've done that earned you that. I, I dare somebody to go home today and look at all the plenty, look at all around you and all the plenty that God has given you. I dare you to go home and say, God, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have this house in the first place. I dare you to say that. I dare you to go home and say, God, if it wasn't for you, the health that I now enjoy, I wouldn't even have this health. And as you begin to engage in introspection and begin to get honest with God, I am completely indebted to you. It opens you up to receive what he has next on the journey. Lamentations is instructive for three reasons. One is because it gives us a chance to look inside ourselves and to be honest with ourselves. But secondly, it gives us an opportunity to look back over the path of which we've come. God loves a heart of gratitude. Yeah. Now, it's one thing that me and God can't stand, and that's an ingrate. Somebody who's not grateful. Have you ever met anybody like that? You give them $2, they ask why you didn't give them three. You give them a loaf of bread, they say, that's not my brand. You buy them a pair of shoes, they say, I wanted some Jordans. They're just, just not satisfied. And God can't stand a heart of ingratitude. And one of the reasons the Limitations 3 and Limitations 4 is written is to instill in us a sense of gratitude because gratitude is the road to humility. God can never use a heart that's full of arrogance and pride. And arrogance and pride will first teach you that you are where you are by your own doing. But secondly, arrogance and pride will teach you that you don't need anything or anyone except yourself. And lamentation causes us to look back in a sense of gratitude and say, God, I want to thank you because I didn't deserve it in the first place. Yes, I had a job that paid 325, I want to thank you that I didn't pay 225. That's gratitude. God, I thank you that I, I have a two bedroom apartment. At least I have somewhere to lay my head. A heart of gratitude is the road to humility. God will never bless us with plenty if we're not faithful over a little. Someone once said, He won't bless you with a whole hog. You don't know what to do with a pig. He won't release plenty into the hands of a fool. And so when God blesses us incrementally, he blesses us on the way. It's just a test to see whether or not we'll be faithful over many. See, if you can be faithful over a few things, he can trust you over the many. But if you can't be faithful over the few things, he's not about to release to you the many. And humility opens us up to say to God, I was faithful in that little piece of job you gave me. I was faithful when I was barely able to make ends meet. I was faithful when I had pain running up and down my body. I was faithful when I got a pink slip. I was faithful when death came knocking at the door. God, you can depend on me. Humility opens us up for God to unleash to us the hidden mysteries. The hidden mysteries, let me tell you. There are hidden mysteries in him because God has not revealed everything to everybody. Mm -hmm. Some people are not ready to take a journey into the deeper things of God. 
And only when the heart is open and receptive can God reveal to us those hidden mysteries. You know, um, not to throw shade, but you can turn the television on uh, most nights, late at night, and you can hear these people um, across stations advertising blessing oil and um, prayer cloths and, um, and lucky numbers and all kind of nonsense. You can almost every night you can hear it. And, uh, and they claim to have some great insight into God. They claim to, to know the way forward, but I, I know that's not right. Uh, my Bible teaches me that the way is so plain that even a fool cannot err. But God would not reveal to us, you know something, don't you want to get to a place where you can lay hands on yourself? Don't you want to get to a place where you can bless your own all? Don't you want to get to a place where you can have your own prayer cloth? God would allow you those hidden mysteries, those deeper things in him when he can trust your heart. But ingratitude will block the road to humility. God can't use us if we're not humble. Can you say amen? God can't use us when we're not humble. That was a problem with the church. Here in the text, every Sunday, they went to the temple and they left just as they had come. Arrogant and ignorant. And it's only when he was able to pierce through to their heart was he able to communicate. But effective communication is a two-way street. Yeah, oh yeah. It's when God speaks to our heart and we speak to God. But what I want to tell you is God will not speak to a heart that's full of ingratitude. Open up your heart. I dare you to say, God, I thank you for bringing me this for. And stop right there. If you don't do anything else, you've already done enough. I thank you that I do have this pain in my body. I want to thank you that it was hard getting up this morning. I want to thank you even that the car didn't want to start. You know why? Because I'm on this side of eternity to see it all. You didn't even have to let me get out of bed this morning. That's what it got. You didn't even have to wake me up. Everything that I have in my life is because of you. Not only... Those limitations try to encourage us to open up our heart and allow spirit of humility. But look at this, look at verse 22 again, if you will, please. And see, here's the thing about it. Um, now, I want you to be honest with yourself. Look back over the most troublesome time of your life and look at the, um, the thing that you struggled with the most. And if you are honest, hallelujah, let me talk about me. Me and Jeremiah, if we are honest, we have to admit that we found ourselves in a situation when human ability alone was not sufficient. I mean, you know, we can find ourselves with our back up against the wall and a phone call will not get through. A text message won't be sufficient. Even family and friends can come around, but still they cannot assuage your pain. I'm telling you, only when a heart has been broken and put back together by the hand of God, is it ready to receive the next things in God. But you think about those moments when everything was falling apart, and if you're truly honest, you will admit that it was nothing but the mercy of God. Nobody else had to know about it. Amen. You didn't have to put it on Facebook. You didn't have to tweet it out. It's that, it's that one thing. God, I feel my help coming through. It's that one thing. I don't know about you, but most of us, hey, yeah, yeah, we have at least that one thing. Yeah, that troubles us. That one thing that we don't share. That one thing we don't discuss. That one thing the church hasn't found out about. But it did not destroy you because of the mercy of God. We struggle. We wrestle. We rise. We fall. We laugh. We cry. Dealing with that one thing. But I stand here to tell somebody here 
that one thing, that big thing, that something, you ought to be grateful because it is because of the mercy of God that it has not consumed you. Anybody else would have lost their mind by now. Anybody else would have left the church by now. Anybody else would have tried to destroy themselves. But the mercy of God looked through the lens of eternity and saw there was something good in you and God allowed your golden moments to roll on. That's why you've not been consumed. Yeah. That's why the enemy didn't eat you up. That's why you didn't lose that job. That's why you didn't lose your mind. That's why your children are doing okay this morning. That's why you have a home to go to. That's why you have food on the table. That's why you have health and strength. That's why you have eyes to see. That's why you have ears to hear. That's why you have a mouth to praise. Because the mercies of God would not let it kill you. It's one thing, it's one thing to be defeated. It's another to be consumed. Can you say amen? If you're defeated, you can live to fight another day. But when you are consumed, everything about you has been lost in the conflict. I wonder is there anybody here who knows you've been through some conflicts? But it was because of the mercy of God, you were not consumed. I'm not trying to say that it did not break your heart, but you were not consumed. I'm not saying you will never see them again down here, but you were not consumed. I'm not saying you have not had to shed many tears, but you are not consumed. I'm not going to say the people on the job don't like you know how, but you are not consumed. I'm not saying you don't have all your strength that you had 30 years ago, but you're not consumed. I thank God that it's because of his mercies that I may be knocked down, but I'm not consumed. I may be battled, but I'm not consumed. I may be broken, but I'm not consumed. I thank God for a whole spirit today, a spirit that prays him in good and bad, a spirit that trusts him with victory and defeat, a spirit that loves him in tears and laughter. I am not consumed because the mercies of God. It's because of him. It is because of him. He brought you this far. He'll lead you home. Oh yes, think about it. There was enough that should have killed you by now. Lord, I wish somebody be honest. There was enough that should have broken your heart by now. You have enough evidence to say I ain't never going to church again. Yeah, you have grounds to never trust them again. You even got reasons never to speak to them again. Hallelujah, but thanks be to God, he didn't let them or it consume you. You're not consumed with it, you're not consumed by it, and you're not consumed because of it. Thanks be to God, you are saved by the mercies of God. I don't know about you, but when it comes down time to press a dying pillar, I want the mercy of God that kept me on this side to receive me on the other side. And what I like the most is yesterday's blessings were for yesterday's problems, but his mercies are new every morning. The battle that I fought last week, he brought me through it, and he'll give me mercy to fight the one next week. The hell hounds you defeated last year, they're gone. God will help you deal with the ones coming up this year. His mercies are new every morning because the challenge is new every morning. The burden is new every morning. The struggle is new every morning. When you get up in the morning, there's a new struggle, but there's a new blessing for the struggle. Not because of where I went to school. Not because of who my parents were. Not because I studied long and hard. Not because I saved well. Not because I'm well read. But it is because of him. Because he's that kind of God who will not leave me or forsake me. 
every situation Jesus ever encountered, he left it better than he found it. He's that kind of God who is a friend to the friendless. He sees the brokenhearted and gives them comfort. He's just that kind of God. He sees our faces soaked with tears and he takes that ecclesiastical handkerchief of heaven and dries our eyes because he's that kind of God. He sees us struggling with the cares of life and we'll not let depression or suicide take us out. He stops by and gives us sustaining grace because he's that kind of God. He looks on our state. He looks at us and sees us, not simply as we are, but as he intends us to be. Nothing we've ever done or will ever do will be sufficient enough to demand God's attention. But it is because of his mercy. Why is he so merciful? Because just, just who he is. And it's all because of him. My brothers and sisters, I want to encourage somebody here today to live in the truth. And the truth is, you have not been consumed because of the mercy of God. That ought to make you grateful and it ought to make you faithful. It ought to make you grateful and it ought to make you faithful. You're grateful that he's done it in the past. You're faithful that he'll do it in the future. And so between now and the future, we live in the present, otherwise called the meantime. I want to encourage you to be grateful and faithful in the meantime. And God will bless you for the rest of your life. Beams of heaven. I was telling Deacon Timmy this morning, that's my, as I, as I go through this wilderness below, guide my feet in peace. For ways, turn all my midnights in in today. This one more time. Beams of heaven. As I go. This wilderness below guide my feet in peaceful ways. Lord, turn all of my midnights in, in today when in the darkness I I would grow and feel sorry for myself Faith always sees a star of hope. Don't you ever give up. Then soon from all lies, bleaks, and dangers. Shall be free some 
someday. I do not know how long it will be or what the future holds for me. But this I do know If Jesus leads me I shall get home Some, someday I do not know Lord how long how long it will be or what the future holds holds for me yeah yeah, yeah. this I know if Jesus leads me, hallelujah, I shall get home some. I want to extend an invitation to discipleship, my friends, for someone to come over on the Lord's side. He's brought you for a reason. I don't know if you've ever thought about it. You look around some time and you say to yourself, I can't believe I've made it this far. However, did I get here from where I started? Through many heart trials, through many disappointments, through many lonely days, through many sleepless nights. Now, you are able to press a pleasant pillar coming from having to eat a little this and that from out the fields, now you can go eat anywhere you want. From having a house that had a tin roof, and whenever it rained, it leaked through, you had to put a bucket there to catch the water, to now you live in comfort. I know I'm talking to somebody here. And you look back and you say, God, I can't believe you done all this for me. For me, now he's done it for others, but for me, I want to tell you, he did it for a reason. He did not do it so you could forget about him. Amen. He did it so you'll be grateful and faithful until he calls you home. Won't you kindly stand as I present the invitation to the disciples? Should I want to go old school? Tell me how. Did you feel when you come out the wilderness? Come out the wilderness. Come out the wild. Tell me how did you feel when you come out the wilderness, leaning on the Lord? Tell me how did you feel when you come out the wilderness, come out the wilderness, come out the wind. Tell me how did you feel when you come out the wilderness, leaning on the Lord. Well, did you feel like shouting when you come out the wilderness, come out the wilderness, come out the wilderness? Did you feel like shouting when you come out the wilderness, 
leaning on the I know that's old school. That tell me that's too old for some of y'all in here. That's real old school, Dr. Collins. I thought y'all. Huh? I know you know this. The doors of the church are open. If there be one, why don't you come now? All to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily That's what the Lord is calling for, a heart of surrender today. Isn't that right? You may be seated. All to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely Forsaken in his presence daily live. I surrender all, Lord Jesus. I surrender. Just one more time. Mm -hmm. Surrender. Oh, Lord Jesus, I. Everything in me. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. oh, to thee. We pray at me, Father in heaven, we thank you for the eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our souls have experienced. We thank you for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for moving by your spirit. Signs and wonders accompany your movement. Great and awesome God, as we stand before you, we plead your mercy. It soothes our case. And God, we know that you are a defender of the defenseless. Defend us in every situation of life wherever we find ourselves, be our aid, be our guide. God, I pray for those who do not yet know you, the pardon of their sins. I pray for that person who's received bad news uh, from the doctor. I pray for that person who's had some sleepless nights because of a big mistake, wondering if son or daughter will return home on their own feet and not, and not in the casket. God, I lift them up before you right now. I pray that you will prick our conscience, open up our hearts to humility. Lord, let us love as you have loved us. Counsel us to be obedient to your will. 
sanctify us completely, wholly and entirely. And Lord, when we have um, done everything that you have assigned for us to do in this life, will you receive us in heaven, your eternal favor? Yeah. Uh, this is our prayer. So it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. I surrender all. You ever felt like giving God everything in you? I surrender all. all. Won't you kindly stand as we receive the benediction? Everything that's in you, my brothers and sisters, I encourage you to just surrender. I'm learning more and more, Dr. Collins, to make sure that all on the altar is laid. Not just my hopes, but also my fears. Not just my health, but also my ills. I want everything, everything on the altar the hymn writer asked the question, is your all on the altar laid? God can never use us completely until we're completely yielded. Amen? There's no room for him to fill a life that's already filled with the things of this world. Gardner Taylor once said, only when we empty ourselves of the joys of this world is there room for God to fill them with heavenly and divine intentions. You only get there through yielding. I pray that we'll have a wonderful year in God and, and I pray that God will bless us in every way that he sees we need the most. That he won't always give us what we want, but he'll give us what we need. And every now and then, he'll give us some of the things we want as well. Not only will he fill our cup, but he'll allow our saucer to overflow as well so that our families can live in the overflow. Thank you again, my friends. It's a wonderful time today. Um, I thank God for the time it has been yours and mine to share. Uh, let's go home. Ready? I expect to spend eternity somewhere around the throne. Oh, somewhere around the throne. Oh, somewhere around the throne. I expect to spend eternity somewhere around the throne. In that new Jerusalem I will see the Lord I love so well Somewhere around the throne Oh, somewhere around the throne Jesus, somewhere around the throne I will see the Lord I love so well Somewhere around the throne in that new Jerusalem. Last one. I will see my friends and loved ones somewhere around the throne. Oh, somewhere around the throne. Oh, somewhere around the throne. I will see my friends and loved ones somewhere around the throne in that new Jerusalem. It is because of him. And now my friends are to the one who's able to keep each of you from falling into the deep nights of desolation and degradation, but is able rather to lift you high upon his mountains of peace. Be love and joy, hope and happiness, now and in that blessed eternal soul surely to come. I heard the people of God witness by saying, Amen, Amen, amen and Amen.